Immune surveillance was a hypothesis first conceived by Paul Ehrlich in 1909, in which the immune system detects and eliminates neoplastic cells in the body. However, despite having a functioning immune system, neoplastic cells are able to avoid this immune surveillance and gain traction, leading to clinically observable tumours. This is achievable through a concept known as immunoediting, in which there are three stages, defined as the three E's, elimination, equilibrium and escape. We will explore these stages now. To help define immunoediting, we will use an analogy of cops and robbers. Elimination is the first stage of immunoediting and it occurs before there is clinical evidence of a tumour in a patient. To use our cops and robbers analogy, the robbers are trying to escape but are promptly stopped by the cops. Elimination requires the recruitment of interferon gamma, natural killer cells or NK cells, perforin, TNF-related apoptosis-inducing ligand or TRAIL, and type 1 interferon. The most essential group of cells are the NK cells in the innate system and CD8 T cells in the adaptive immunity. Elimination is initiated when cells of the innate immune system are alerted to the presence of a growing tumour. The second stage of immunoediting is equilibrium. This is a temporary state in which tumour cells are hypothesised to remain dormant or continuously evolve by accumulating further changes in their DNA. Simultaneously, the immune system continues to eliminate tumour cells that it recognises as foreign. This essentially creates a selective pressure on the tumour cells, as only the cells capable of evading the immune system will survive and proliferate. To go back to our analogy, the cops are becoming less and less effective at capturing the robbers, and the robbers take some time to regroup and find resources to survive. There are mechanisms still in place to prevent exponential tumour growth. Cellular dormancy of the tumour cells, angiogenic dormancy, in which the tumour is not capable of sustaining a blood supply, and immune dormancy, in which the level of the anti-tumour response is matched by tumour development. The last stage is escape, in which the tumour begins to develop beyond the control of the immune system and becomes clinically observable. In our cops and robbers scenario, despite the best efforts of the cops, they become outnumbered and the robbers get away and can wreak havoc. There are several mechanisms used to achieve this escape from the immune system. For example, through the alteration of the expression of the HLA and the loss of co-stimulatory molecules which are essential for an immune response. Secondly, the tumour cells can, through cell surface antigens or antigen antibody complexes, induce the production of T regulatory cells which suppress the immune response and induce energy in other T lymphocytes. A third mechanism is the induction of lymphocyte apoptosis. Targeted immunotherapies based on immune escape mechanisms have been developed and proved to work synergistically to target cancer cells.